Wes Stewart here from Look Up Way Up Observatory in beautiful Prince Edward County, Ontario. So by request, uh, today I'm going to do a little review on the 10-inch Orion XT Plus. Uh, it's just a very standard Newtonian reflector. Before um, we talk about this specific telescope, I want to just add my opinion to a long list of opinions that are out there about an 8-inch telescope versus a 10-inch. Now, a lot of uh, people will say that uh, an 8-inch is really a good beginner's telescope and that there's a good chance it's the only telescope you will ever buy. I would um, disagree with that. Now, I think a, an 8-inch telescope is definitely much better than a 6. However, if you are serious about astronomy, an 8-inch telescope, uh, you will get tired of it. It, um, it will be frustrating. Uh, there are a lot of things up there that you just will not be able to see with an 8-inch telescope. Uh, I think it's almost guaranteed that within a few years, you're going to get that itch. You're going to want to have a little bigger telescope. A 10-inch telescope, on the other hand, I don't think you'll ever get bored of it. I think it is really the perfect size. Now, an 8-inch telescope is slightly more portable. However, there's really not that much difference in practical terms. Uh, this little guy, you can just lift that. It maybe weighs 25 pounds. Anyone can lift this and carry it themselves, no problem. Even Tom Brady could. Until he meets the Saints in the playoffs. And uh, they break him like a HB pencil. <laughs> then he's going to have to have his wife help him. But for now, he could do it. So that just sets in there. Um, the footprint of this telescope is not much bigger than an 8 inch. Uh, you can just stick it in the corner of your room and it's not really any big deal. So I find it incredibly portable. You can just take that, throw it in the back seat of your car, throw it in the trunk. Uh, this little base is not very heavy. So that's my uh, two cents worth. Definitely go with a 10 inch telescope. You will never regret it. It just shows you so many more things than an 8 inch. So this uh, particular telescope, what is the, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly? Uh, there are a lot of things I love about this telescope. It is uh, pretty much my favorite telescope. If I could only own one telescope, it would be uh, this one. Um, I love the focuser on this telescope. It's a two-speed, it's all metal, no plastic. Uh, it just has a beautiful feel to it. You know when something is just heavy and you have gears that are just soaked in grease and they just feel so smooth and solid? That's the feel that you get. It feels very uh, well made. And it allows you to get perfect focus uh, with any eyepiece that you're using. Uh, the optics are very good. In fact, uh, an easy way to test your optics and your focuser, for that matter, uh, just point at any really bright star. Uh, if you get a perfect focus on that star, you're going to see crosshairs of light. Kind of like the points on a compass. So if you're perfectly focused and you have good optics, that crosshair should be razor sharp. And that's very easy to achieve with this telescope. Uh, no matter what uh, eyepiece I'm using, you can just get a beautiful focus. Uh, the same thing is true if you're using a camera. You want to get those uh, crosshairs of light just razor sharp. That means you're well focused. 
Uh, so the optics are good. The focuser is awesome. This is just your standard red dot finder. It's actually plastic, not aluminum. So that's a little cheaper. It's just, uh, it is what it is. They're all basically the same. Uh, let's talk about the columnation. I almost never have to columnate this telescope. It's, uh, I check it with the laser and it's just, it just never moves. But if you do have to columnate it, it's very, very high quality down here. Nice heavy metal ring. These, uh, you can pretty much turn these just with your hand. You can use a screwdriver on these ones, but you can pretty much do it by hand. So these are very nice, uh, big, high quality. There are some little screw holes here. If you did want to add a fan, uh, you could add a fan. Uh, and now on this end with the secondary mirror, you have actually little thumb screws, so you don't have to use a screwdriver. So that's a nice little feature. Um, really using a screwdriver is not really a problem anyway. And I don't think I've ever adjusted the secondary mirror. It just stays perfectly in place. A uh, very good quality dust cover as well. And this ring at the top is nice heavy gauge uh, steel. The tube itself is pretty good heavy gauge steel. Uh, the seam that runs down the back is just crimped. Uh, I would prefer if they had at least spot welded it. It's just a better quality way of doing it, but it, it's, it's nice and solid. Now those are the things that I like about the telescope. A couple of things that um, I'm not impressed with. In fact, it's uh, shameful that Orion did this. Two things. These bearings, plastic. That is not acceptable. This is supposed to be their deluxe model telescope, high end. These should always be metal. So that is disgraceful. Abomination, it's egregious. <laughs> now, the other thing that uh, I really don't like, uh, normally you have a cutout half circle and these wheels will fit in that half circle. In this case, they simply put screws through here, two screws on these little plastic um, circles. Uh, and that just sits in these. So it does feel good. The motion is, is nice. It's never given me any problem, but it's just not a durable way. And the other way is time tested and proven. It's the way that everyone has always made these. So that is just uh, Mickey Mouse, to be honest. And again, for a deluxe telescope, it's not acceptable. But as I said, it really hasn't given me any, any problem. So we'll see. If these were ever to break, what I would simply do is take some three quarter inch plywood, cut it out to this size, glue it and screw it on the inside and that would just fit down in there. That's the way it should have been done in the first place. Um, now the underneath here, I better take this stuff off. Uh, these are the eyepieces that it came with. Uh, two times Shorty Barlow, 10 millimeter, little basic colossal, good quality. And it came with a two inch, 28 millimeter. Um, again, pretty good. I'm not a really big fan of two inch eyepieces. I just use my 40 
a 40 millimeter and 25, uh, one and a quarter inch. Now, under here, I'm not crazy about this as well. So, this piece is just a triangle. And all you have really are three little Teflon tabs on each corner. I mean, it's okay. I much prefer a Lazy Susan roller bearing. Um, down the road, if I ever get energetic, I might add a few more Teflon tabs just to um, reduce the friction a little bit. I just find it's a little too much uh, friction for just three tabs to handle. Uh, that's good. Now, uh, final thought, this, um, this telescope is pretty well balanced, but you will notice it will sag. When it gets about, uh, about there, it will start to sag. So, they have these uh, little screws. I don't normally even use these. I just set it in, but you can uh, just put this screw on here. Just add a little bit of uh, tension, a little bit of friction, and it really doesn't take much at all. Just the tiniest little bit, and, and uh, your problem is pretty much solved. If you do want to add a big camera or something heavy, you can just tighten that up as much as you want until it feels good. Uh, so you shouldn't ever have to add weights to the back end of, of this scope. So all in all, I love the telescope. I highly recommend, no matter what telescope you buy, make sure you get a metal two-speed focuser. Uh, they are just, they mean everything. They make a huge difference. Now this telescope comes in a six inch, eight inch, and a 10 inch model. The six inch does not have this focuser. It has a single speed. So I would avoid that. Uh, the eight inch and the 10 inch have it. So it's a must. Um, would I buy this again? Uh, I probably would. Here in Canada, we have um, a lot less options than in the United States. Uh, if I was in the U.S., I would shop around, um, see if you can find one that has metal side bearings, two-speed focuser, and if the price is right, um, I like all telescopes generally. Uh, otherwise, this is a, it's a great telescope. I've used this a lot here at the observatory, a lot more than a normal uh, person would use it, and it stood up perfectly so far. There's no signs of uh, wear and tear at all, so it's a good durable so far. So that's, um, that's a review of the Orion XT10 Plus telescope. I hope you find dark skies.